Mr. Dallahan? Here. Mrs. Gallagher? Here. Mr. Kravchek? Here. Mr. Moore? Here. Mr. Parzik? Here. Mrs. Rich? Here. The meeting is now open. Adequate notice of the meeting was provided by posting a copy of the time and place on the Municipal Clerk's Bulletin Board and mailing a copy of same to the press and the Cape County Herald on January 4th, 2019. Will everyone please rise to salute the flag? We're going to pick up where we left off at the last work session meeting with Grant Russ. I think we were on buildings and grounds. Stand by. Don't blind me yet. Maybe he's not blind. Can everybody see that? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, before we get started, I want to say that this, as a budget presentation, is borderline ridiculous. I do not, I, I, as somebody who has run companies and done budgets for 30 years, I've never seen a budget that goes from one year to the next with exact same numbers, department after department, line item after line item. There is no forecast, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. There is a forecast for the year, but there is no statement of where we are at the moment to be able to relate that to the forecast for the year. And I think we, we need a whole, uh, a whole review or a redo of this budget process because when you're telling me that we're going to be spending uh, stationary forms, $3,000 for the municipal court for 2019 and we're going to spend $3,000 at the end of two, 2024, that's nonsense. That makes no sense at all. The, we're, we're wasting time and we're wasting paper putting this stuff out the way it is. That's my comment. What I think would be really helpful would be when um, people like Grant are presenting, if they just focus on those items which have changed. Yes. If it's exactly what we saw last year, we heard the presentation last year, but those, if you're saying that um, last year Garbage cans cost $2,000, but this year they're $28,000. Then there's a reason. I think that might help if we just heard those things that have increased or even decreased so we could applaud you. I don't have a problem going line by line. That's fine. But how we should... Well, Anybody at home looking at this presentation would say, who is running the ship here? This, this makes no sense when you have a budget that is identical with 2020 as it's going to be for 2024. There's not a 2% a increase in inflation. There's not, uh, we're not going to find cost reduction someplace here that we're going to knock the number down. So 
It's the analysis of how the budget's done. You start, or you should start off with where you are as of August 31st. Right. Now, and from there you make a projection for the full year. You say, okay, we are at three thousand dollars right now. By the end of the year, we're going to be at five thousand dollars. And then you take the budget from the succeeding years from that point. But you just don't go three thousand, three thousand, three thousand, three thousand, three thousand, whether it's line by line or the whole department. I think I think I, I agree with both of you. But Grandpa can have a job there doing this either. <laughs> That's, that's fine. I don't have a problem with uh, simple projections on cans of motor oil or gallons of gasoline that are used. That's not, it is, that's going to be what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. But yeah, to have. I, I, know what you mean. I, 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 get it. I, I understand where you're coming from too, but my, my, in, in my experience, for lack of a better word, our budget is very mundane and it's not as dynamic as perhaps in the private sector. So I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, Grant and any other department heads that are here, in your experience, what you're doing now is reflective of how we've operated over the past 10 years. So this works, I guess, is what I'm saying. And I think if, we, if it didn't work and you thought we needed to revamp this in some form or fashion because we're, we're finding ourselves off course in any significant form or fashion from year to year, I think we would have that conversation and then we would change it. So I think based on the history here and the experience, I think this, you know, works. And I think it's a different animal than you're probably used to in the private sector. But I'm saying it doesn't work. I mean, you, as a, as a manager looking at numbers, if you look at these sheets of paper and all the numbers are identical from one column to the next to the next to the next. Again, it seems odd, but I guess what I'm saying is I think in Grant, for, let's just use Grant for now because he's up here, this works for him and this is, holds true, so to speak, from year to year and it has held true over the past 10 years. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but am I speaking true to this? Um, you're right. I, I analyzed my budget through the Edmund system monthly. I see what my departments are spending, and I adjust to those. When, when she calls for a budget, I'm pulling everything out of Edmonds for, for the la from January 1st out. And then I look back to the year previously. And you won't find in my budget that everything stays consistent. My budget changes depending on what is the demand on my departments. I'm sorry to have interrupted your, your presentation. I just looked at the first sheet mm -hmm. of the first page of what's in front of me, and it's the same thing that I said the last time we met, that it's, it's not the correct way to do a budget. Mm -hmm. You may be doing it absolutely correctly. I'm not making a comment on what you're doing. This is not directed at you. Right. This is directed I, about the, at the process of how you budget. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is you take what you have spent through August of this year and you project through the end of the year. I do. Of what you're going, okay, that's, that's the right way to do it. But you can't tell me that looking at this first sheet that. Right. Do you have buildings and grounds in front of you? No, I don't. No. Oh. I have can, can I? I have poor municipal court. She was up first. Last can I time. interrupt you for a second, Frank? Sure. Um, the budget worksheet that you have right now is new up until this year every department and you're assuming right now yours and that's okay because you have not worked through the budgets with the departments in prior years but every department does look at and in prior forms and that maybe it's just as simple of 
adding another column in there, which is easy enough to do. We tried to get as much information in here to do a five-year projection. Prior years, it would always be your budget for, say, it would say 2019 budget, and then there was a, a column for a projection of what they thought 2019 final would be, and then they would request the 2020 budget. Mm -hmm. The departments have never had or have had the experience to project out over five years. So it is a learning curve with them. This is their first shot at it, so I just say be patient with them. And I, try, I tried to say this at the last meeting. This is just their first to give to us. Internally, I will go back, I will look at it, I will make recommendations on if I think in like a two year or a three year, it can be, it should be increased or it should be reduced. Same thing within your own committees. When we meet again, we will be looking at that and asking all those questions. I don't want you to think that they just came in and said, oh, I don't care, I'm just gonna da da da. No, it's a work in progress for them, but they do every year, they look at what they spent prior and they project out. That's why I said we use a modified zero-based budget because you don't necessarily start from scratch. You start from the history of what your necessary expenditures are, and then you always have those variables each year of something new that might come in or a one-shot thing that someone's gonna ask for, and then they have to justify that what that is. So I just asked to have a little bit of patience working through this, um, like I said, because it is the first time that they've done that. I've, I can project out five, 10 years, but I've been doing that for almost 40 years. These departments have not done that, so just have a little patience with them. Patience is a virtue. Have it if you can. <laughs> Seldom in a woman and never in a man. <laughs> I, I agree, but this is not the end product, I'm nor would I expect it to be. I'm with you. Okay. Thank you. Sorry, Grant. <laughs> That's okay. So how do you want to do this? <laughs> I will tell you that my, um, my computer supplies and repairs, if you look at uh, number um, 213, that's the one area where we're going to see a big increase um, because of some of the changes that we've done to the software and the, um, the cloud system that we're going to and the malware that we have to uh, incur. Um, I have eight computers in my, uh, my shop between my foreman and my office staff. And that's where the, the biggest increase is. For all the other departments, we, we generally spend, um, when it comes to public works and in the buildings department, we generally spend the, the same amount of money on paper um, for, for copies, the same amount of money on, on our dues and our subscriptions. I do have one um, area in here. <coughs> that I really can't project out and that's um, our service agreements. Um, if you look at uh, 209, at the uh, bottom of the first sheet, it, it has HVAC systems, elevators, elevator maintenance. I don't know when they're going to break down. I don't know um, what repairs are going to be needed, but I have contracts that I have to um, prepare and have every single year. And the anticipation is, in hopes of, that for the next year, there will be no breakdowns. Um, just minor repairs to it and the service contracts that, that go along with it. But after that, I'm anticipating a 1.5% um, to 2% uh, percent increase because of those service contracts never go down. They st never stay the same. Um, pretty much, at, like, like I said, everything is pretty consistent um, through the, for the next two years. I'm trying to keep the budget down. You never know when somebody's going to call and request a, a fence to be repaired or <laughs> a bench that uh, has broken and needs to be repaired or a multitude of things that need to be replaced. 
uh, if we have vandalism on the beach and I have to replace all the, the trash can racks um, or the, um, the cans themselves, that's, I can't anticipate it, but I have to have the money in place in order to, to make those repairs. The trash bags that go inside of those cans, they're pretty consistent every year. They, do, they may move uh, up or down um, cost-wise, depending on the market. So those numbers are, are gonna stay pretty consistent. So if you see that for the most part, every single light item does move in a percentage increase um, through 2022, other than the, the uh, software issues that we have. So why are the uh, street, meter, street parking meter expenses jumping up to $42,000? That's, that's um, public works. Um, that's not buildings and grounds. The, um, I'm sorry. The, that's the parking meter contracts for services and repairs. Last year, this year we're in a, um, a shortfall on my anticipation. What I do is I adjust money from other other line items in uh, DPW in order to make up that that loss. We went from um, we increased the amount of parking uh, kiosk machines on 96th Street by sixfold, six of them. There wasn't any last year, so I anticipated what it was going to cost. It came in higher in the internet um, act the internet. Uh, that each one of those machines has, the modems, um, the paper that has to be installed, maintaining them, the uh, contracts to maintain them. I do have a contract that I have every year that if something fails, they replace it, I don't have to pay for it because I have that contract with that service contract with them. That's why that number went up. But what I do is I adjust and try to pull money from the other line items to make that up. Go solid waste. Grant. I do have it here, so here it is. Okay. Uh, 205, that's, that's office supplies. Like I said, that's, that's uh, general paper usage, envelopes, whatnot. Um, it, like I said, it still stays consistent throughout the year. Dues and subscriptions, the same thing. Cell phone use, I saw a uh, decrease in the amount that we were, we were being charged for that line item, so that's come down 300 bucks. For next year, I'm still anticipating an increase after that, so that number goes up a little bit in 2024 hoping that the numbers will stay down, depending on the cell, how much they're gonna be charging us for cell phone usage. Um, let's see. Maintenance, maintenance and service contracts, that's for our copy machines. Um, that's the cover of a um, new machine that we have um, in our department. The, um, the copier will be paid off, I believe, after next year, and then we just have a service agreement with them after that. That's why that number went up a little bit. <coughs> Conferences, that stays, all, that stays the, same, um, the same, well, no, it doesn't. It goes up $800 because the number of people that are going to those conferences has increased. That's why 216 went up a couple dollars. And that's just a percentage increase. <coughs> so forgive me if these numbers are all consistent. Um, but like I said, it's, it's normal for me to look at my budget, see how much we're spending on, on different uh, vehicles, uh, repairs, and. Um, 
tires, for instance. Um, it pre pretty much stays consistent. We're, we wear out tires in the same rate every year. We buy new tires every year. We, we maintain our vehicles the same every year. Um, licensing fees are consistent every year. We, ha we buy new vehicles, we have to register them. We have uh, DOT permits that, that come in every year that we have to pay for. So everything stays pretty consistent. One of the items that does change is fluctuating downward um, is uniforms. Um, that is the, the equipment that we give them um, to do their job. If you see that, you'll see that in 251. I saw that we weren't spending as much money in that line item. I shifted that money elsewhere um, to make up other shortfalls. And pretty much uh, everything else is a, a percentage increase through 24 in uh, solid waste. Um, safety compliance grant. You have a question? Yeah, I do. Question? No. Have safety compliance. Yeah, sorry. Again, uh, the line items pretty much stay consistent. Dues and subscriptions, service contracts. Um, that's our lift uh, inspections for auto lift in the automotive department, our um, boom truck that uh, takes care of all our signage and our, our street lights. And then we have a, a contract with a, a um, what do you call it? Um, shore counseling. Cape counseling. Cape counseling. Those are contracts we, we, um, we pay for through our safety compliance. Equipment that pays for our, our hats and our hard hats, our, our PPE, our eye protection that we give the guys, our safety vests every year. We buy the same amount of vests every year for our summer seasonal guys. Numbers stay consistent for the next year. We do have a, a little bit of stock left, but we don't have to increase the price next year. But I do see an increase in the next coming years. Next one would be utility bulk electric. That's a tricky one. That. <laughs> Where to stay now, I guess. Electric. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's. I'm sorry, but it does stay consistent throughout the next two years. But that also depends, it's all going to depend on how cold it is, how hot it is, how many people leave the lights on in the buildings. Um, I do see that we're not going to spend as much money this year, $150,000 this year, but I don't anticipate that number going down. So I try and to keep it um, at that cost for the next two years, and then I anticipate an increase from there. Um, we spend uh, pretty much the same in gasoline, depending on the hazards, how many fire calls, how many, um, how many uh, overtime hours that we have with our employees. Um, street lights, the same thing. We pay for the street lights that are out um, in town, both um, our own lights as well as the, the um, the street lights in the neighborhoods that comes out of this budget. Uh, the phones and fax, I don't, and I don't do that. That's, that's um, yeah. So this year we're, in fact, right now we're in the process of switching our phones to a VoIP over our voice over IP solution. So that's what the savings there is. And not only will there be uh, the monthly cost be less, but we can also get rid of one of the vendors that we currently use that maintains our existing system. And hopefully by 2024, there's a slight drop there. I'm hoping to, to get rid of the electronic faxes that we have now. The only big increase that I'm seeing this, this year, and I do believe we're going to be in a shortfall, is in natural gas uh, to heat our buildings. Um, so I took, I took those, those, 
that 2% that we uh, have in those other line items above and pulled it down and put it into natural gas to make up that shortfall we're going to have this year. That money will be made up from the balances of other, other line items and other departments in order to pay for that. All right, that finishes, sorry, that finishes up um, public works. We'll uh, then go into uh, public safety. Just give me a second to switch out the budget folders. Does anybody have any questions for Ken? Okay, first up is municipal court. Uh, Debbie could not be here. Do we have a fill in? Laura will present her budget. Good afternoon, I'm Laura. It's nice to meet everybody sort of officially. <laughs> um, I have Deb's budget here, so I'm gonna do my best because I'm kind of filling in for her. But the office supplies, the three grand, I know that sort of sounds awful, but part of with the municipal court is that includes the tickets, which are four part carbon notices. So they're not super cheap. And we have traffic and criminal tickets that we're responsible for the inventory on. There has to be a built in budget because we never know if the state is gonna change anything that's on the back legislation wise, which would either mean we'd have to put stickers on each and every one or reprint them. And we have no idea whenever they're gonna do that. They're changing a lot with bail reform and all kinds of things right now. So it's quite possible that that could change. And I think that that's part of the uncertainty of knowing in her five year projection where it's gonna go is building in that budget for if things change and also how many they're gonna write um, in terms of year to year. Also that includes for the um, mailers that we send out for late tickets and stuff, two boxes of those is approximately $250. I know that number because I deal with them and there's no saying for every late ticket, anything like that, those print out. So we have to send them by state law. That's also included in that. So when you think of it as tickets and mailers, which I think might be better to break it down in the future, it sounds a lot better than boxes of letterhead and paper when you understand exactly what kind of supplies are covered underneath of that. Um, dues and subscriptions, that includes the judges association as well as our associations. And those are things that we have to do to keep our credit and certification active. Both Debbie and I are certified and the judge has mandatory trainings he has to attend as well. And the West Group publications where you see that, that's all the law books that anything they change by the state, we have to get the book. I'll look at a book and I'll be like, this is a $200 book, but it's one of those things that they set the price and there's really no other vendor or competition in terms of law books that we can turn to. Um, the cell phones for Debbie and myself are for us being on call if anyone's arrested 24 seven, you know, 365, we can get called at 3 a.m. to see if we will let them go. It's the court's call if that person doesn't have the money to ROR them and set up a new court date or keep them until we can hear them through the court. So the cell phones are in pertinence to that. The equipment and service contracts are the recording for recording the sessions, which we do share, and I believe Debbie indicated that. And the copier is we own our copier. We do not have a specific service contract. It's a, you know, anything goes wrong with it, we call out one individual. It seems to be more cost effective than going long-term contract with us because we haven't had that much trouble with our copier. Um, the equipment and purchases and repairs, I think that's more again a fail safe because we really haven't had to repair or replace anything. I'm here all the time, Deb's half time in Avalon and I've had no really trouble with the equipment. Anything that I have trouble through is the state and the state comes out and services all their own equipment without bothering the borough. Um, the tuition, that would also probably fall under the same with the travel and conferences. Deb and I switch off which ones we go to to cover our certifications. She goes to the spring one, I go to the league. We share information and we cover the two major court um, meetings of the year. We're able to give each other and the court's not closed in that way because I'm you know, the only one here and then she covers here instead of being in Avalon. So we don't go to both of them for both of us. And the professional fees, that's another one where it's really hard to call for a projection because the interpreters are very expensive. It's usually about $200 just for them to come 
and they have a mandatory of two hours, $50 travel fee, and we don't know what language. So even if you have the language line, which is in the more affordable option, held on the bench is really not feasible because then you have to have one in with the prosecutor. The, the person that's the interpreter is able to walk that person through the whole process, being up there with the judge, going in with the prosecutor and talking to them about what's happening, and then coming out to the window of me being able to communicate a payment with them. So that's, I mean, especially certain languages, unfortunately, are more expensive than others. So if you're dealing with Arabic or I think Debbie just had some language I couldn't even pronounce, you're going to deal because it's harder to get somebody that speaks that language with a higher price tag. And it's one of those unknowns of what you're going to deal with year to year. So that's, I think, her built in there with the uncertainty of what you're going to have. Any questions? Very good, thank you. Okay, and Deb also provided at the mayor's request the um, increase in the A criminal side are up 41 from last year in filings, and the traffic filings are down 157. That's all. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next up would be fi uniform fire code official. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Okay, I don't have 25 pages like Grant, but uh, uh, the uniform fire code budget uh, is the same. Uh, it's worked for us for the past few years. Um, the only thing that has increased in that budget is the equipment and, ser equipment and service contracts, and that is because we have in this year's capital to buy new computer software, which we have not purchased yet because we haven't found the proper one yet. And we anticipate that the yearly fee will go up for the new software from the old software. Um, I, have to, I have to apologize. I, when I was, became chief in 29 years ago, Jerry Gladue was here, and we were told 0% increase across the board. So that's, that's I'm in that mindset of 0% across the board. So. Um, I'll work on this better for the next few years, getting this in line. Any questions about the fire? Pretty simple budget. Thank you. Um, Why are there uniforms in two places? Am I looking at the, on page one and page two, you have the uniform expense. One, the, I think you're looking at, one's for the fire code official for the fire bureau, uniforms, and one is for the fire department. Got it. Yeah, this one, next one up is the volunteer fire company. Okay. Okay. <coughs> and again, that budget is, has, has held true for the past uh, number of years. Um, obviously, we our cell phones, our equipment service contracts. I did make an increase in our equipment purchases, and this was based on our discussion in our uh, public safety meetings that we need to increase the salaries for the EMS. Uh, currently, the rescue squad, uh, through their donation from the borough and through their um, donations have been paying salaries and they've been purchasing the EMS equipment. And we anticipate for next year raising those salaries and I would like to make it to just be able to use the money from the rescue squad strictly for the payroll and not to have to also mix it in with buying the EMS equipment. Um, so I put that in. And since the EMS is part of the fire department, we put the EMS supplies in the fire department's budget of $3,000. And that is the, the, the supplies we use on, on the ambulance, whether it's bandages or gauze or things like that. Do you want me to go find my line or you? Sorry. Okay. Um, no, I think that's it. Somebody doesn't have any questions. Do you want me to do my reports now? Or what, what you sorry, what? My reports now or what? <coughs> okay. Um, I also have JT's report. Um, I'll just go over the quickly. I think you have the, uh, the summer statistics. Uh, we, and we consider the summer of June 1st to August 31st. Wasn't that and we had 157 fire calls, and that was up 48 from the previous year. Uh, I, every month I've been saying it's been a record year. Well, you can see that it was a quite a year. Uh, EMS responded to 271 calls, and that was up 35 from the previous year. Uh, the calls included eight building fires. Uh, 15 cooking fires, and that was up five from the previous summer. One vehicle fire, one mulch fire, one dumpster fire, 23 EMS assists, 21 beach EMS assists, and that's the most beach EMS calls we've ever had, and that was up 19. Two motor vehicle accidents, one search for a person in the water, five elevator rescues, two surf rescues, 
Seven watercraft rescues, and that was up nine from the previous summer. One gasoline spill, 11 natural gas leaks, four arcing wires. Three medevacs, one public assist. Five cover assignments, three smoke scares, one sprinkler activation, 46 fire alarms, which is up 20 from the previous year, and far five carbon dioxide alarms. You, get, you have to remember that, that we, re we respond to 100 or 300 calls a year, so we did half of our calls in three months. So, any questions? Roger, back, go back to uniforms, um, pretty please. Um, you have just you have down under uniforms, gloves, fire boots, harness, etc. But that includes the firemen's coats and overalls and stuff. Yes, right? that's, a, that's a turnout gear. Okay, that's, uh, that's yeah. basically what that that is spent for. Yeah, put that uh, word in there. Okay, because that's <laughs> a, it's about two thousand dollars a piece for a turnout gear. So yeah, got it. That's what I thought. It just makes it look like your gloves are really expensive. Yeah, <laughs> actually, one they pair are. of boots is about five hundred dollars. <laughs> oh God. So. I have the report from JT for OEM, and I guess I'll just read this. Mm -hmm. The county coordinators meeting was held on August 29th. Stone Harbor OEM was present. Several items we discussed, most importantly, OEM coordinators received training on the different types of municipal waste systems, shutdowns that can occur during heavy weather events. That sounded exciting. The tropics have been very active as predicted. Hurricane Dorian affected our area in early September. No damage resulted from the storm. OEM would like to thank DPW for their quick response, removing the beach shacks and preparing the barrow. Only limited minor flooding was observed throughout the town. We are currently in the most historically active period of hurricane season. We ask that all residents and visitors monitor National Hurricane Center's website for updates on the tropics. And that's JT's report. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Chief. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So the, the uh, 2020 budget for the police department, uh, a lot like the fire department, uh, I was always taught to try to keep it flat, uh, but for known increases that you, you have in front of you uh, in terms of paperwork that you know for the future. Uh, so basically everything from 204 to uh, 207 has stayed the same. Uh, unfortunately, 209 equipment and service contracts, that seems to be the, the problem with most departments. Uh, I tried to color code it to make it a little more easily understandable. So where you see uh, loss in the green, the three right in a row, loss off, biomaker, and info cop, they are all in conjunction with each other for the loss off CAD system, which we currently use. When we switched to the county dispatch center in 2020, we, those costs, those, that 7,900, the 1,428, and the 1,050 will be replaced by the, the fourth green down the bottom there, which says Cape May County CMC Info Share CAD system, which is 10,575. And there's a difference there in about $200. We went up about $200 for the CAD system. Uh, the network cost allocation, which is basically for information technology. Uh, that was added in 2019, uh, so and we did not have that in our budget uh, for at the for the beginning of 2019. It was added on uh, within the, the this year, uh, so we just added that in for next year to make sure that we're we're covered. Uh, the blue portion, the Power DMS policy accreditation system. Uh, this is a software system that has basically become a, requ a requisite. Uh, the mayor is familiar with this system. Uh, when we received our accreditation uh, back earlier this year, uh, one of the assessors gave a, a quasi-presentation on this system and the need and the how it's required for us to keep our accreditation. Uh, we received policy updates, things of that nature, through this system, and prior to this year, we, we didn't have it. <laughs> so it was kind of a shock to, uh, to us to hear that we were going to get policy updates through a computer system. Typically, we're, we're pretty old school. Everything's paper file. Uh, however, moving forward, the State Chiefs Accreditation, Accreditation Association, everything is going to be computerized. So it, it becomes a required type, uh, type software. Uh, the Office 365 subscription, that's, that's in the red there. Uh, Mr. Kraft, I've been working with Mr. Kraft about that. That's basically a borough-wide uh, email 
type system that has uh, PowerPoint, uh, a number of different software applications in, in it. Uh, so that's, we're just sharing in the cost there with the borough. Uh, the other two areas are in two, th everything else stayed the same moving down. Uh, in 237, uh, psych and physical exams. Uh, the red portion mandated drug testing. We upped it last year and then in the beginning of 2019, uh, we were notified from the prosecutor's office that they will no longer, they used to pick up the fee for our, our random testing of officers. <coughs> we usually test about five officers a year uh, at a cost of $45 a person. There's a, that's the $225 increase. Uh, and the uniforms, the, the purple portion at uh, line 251, um, it's just something that, uh, that can't be projected right now because of the collective bargaining agreement that is being negotiated at the moment. Uh, otherwise, everything stayed the same. We did, we did take a look. I met with Mrs. Goucher at one point to, to talk about projections, and uh, I did go back and look at ammunition because that's something that, depending on what's going on in the world, that tends to fluctuate up and down, up and down. Uh, I remember several years ago we could not buy 45 caliber ammunition uh, due to the, the war. Um, and we, were, we went without ammunition in, in the 45 caliber for almost a year. We were 12 to 18 months out on delivery. Um, but I did look back uh, the past several years and nothing has changed in that respect. That doesn't mean it can't change you know, from day to day, week to week, depending on what's happening around the world. Uh, but I, I feel pretty confident that uh, nothing will change there. Otherwise, uh, I believe that was pretty much it. Any, anybody have any questions for him at the moment? Okay. Any questions? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you want me to do my monthly report? Yes. Sure. Uh, the monthly report. Uh, for August for the police department, there were 263 motor vehicle stops and 12 adults were arrested. Uh, in terms of personnel, the full-time officers, that, that was away at military training for the majority of August has returned. Uh, officer Santini, who was sworn in last month as a full-time officer, is currently attending the Cape May County Police Academy with uh, an expected graduation of January 2020. Uh, we currently have three class two officers working a regular schedule. Uh, for the, uh, for the month of September, and two SLEO 2s that return periodically, pending their availability on weekends. Uh, pending your approval tonight, uh, we will extend the services to, of two of those SLEO 2s through the month of October to help cover Squad 2 while Officer Santini, who's at the police academy, is assigned to Squad 2 while he's away. And then once October comes and uh, is finished, excuse me, uh, those two officers will leave and then we will hopefully pick up one officer uh, to cover November and December. Uh, the, reason, the reason being with the switches is that uh, we have to give the officers a break. They can't work 12 months in a row. So the officer that, that we currently have on break for the month of September, he'll, he will have his break done. The other two officers have to leave because they can't continue working uh, through the end of the year. And then so that one will substitute for the two, if that's understandable. It's a little wacky. Uh, and our 2020 SLEO 1, SLEO 2 hiring process is closed and interviews are being scheduled as we speak. Uh, that's pretty much it on uh, an update for personnel. Uh, the biggest project we have coming up in the near future is the transition from Avalon Dispatch to the County Dispatch and the logistics of working out timing basically with the CAD system and the radio system. Uh, but so far, no. I, I can't give you a hard, fast answer. Uh, we were hoping for October 1st. Uh, that's, that's not gonna happen. The radio installation takes about eight weeks uh, and we just got the, um, the purchase order generated today. So we're probably looking at like mid-November, the earliest and the latest the end of the year. But if the, the quicker we can get over there though, the better, I think. But that all, it, it kind of all dovetails in with the CAD system and the migration of the old information from Lawsoft into the new system. It's, um, it's, it's a little wacky here and there. That's about all I have. Thank you. Okay, Beach Patrol, Sandy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, the 
I'm requesting 63,000. That's the same as for 2020, the same that we had this year, and it was the same in 2018. Um, so I don't, I'm not raising, I'm not requesting to raise the bottom line. There are some minor adjustments in some of the lines that, that uh, I determined by just what we spent this year. Just uh, for example, uh, office supplies went up $100. Uh, promotional advertising, we didn't spend anything. That was spent out of miscellaneous, so I just increased that. Um, equipment's unchanged. The uh, boat supplies went, went up a little bit. Like you can see the, the changes are, it adds up to be the same. That was what I was really trying to, luckily it, it worked out that way, being able to accommodate every line for next year. We need a new system that comes out of capital, is that okay. right? Okay. So I was going to request that okay. in the capital. As far as 2021, I projected a 2% increase. It's not in every line. It would be difficult for me to even uh, project where, so uh, it, it seems that uniforms tend to go up a lot um, and equipment, they're the larger things, so that was where I accounted for the, uh, the increase. And then I wanted to try and stay flat the year after that, and then a 2% the year following and then keep it flat. So it's, it would be like a 1% per year, which may be less than the rate of inflation, I don't know. It's, it gets difficult because we tend to spend a little more on one line one year and then the next year that one's down a little bit, but it always seems to, when the smoke clears, it's about the same thing. Sandy, does your budget include the, uh, the uh, change in the um, compensation rates? No, no, this is um, for the OE or? For the uh, beach patrol. That's in salaries. Yeah, that's yeah, a, that would be it. Yeah, that's right now we're separate. just doing the operating. Okay. It's, and this is also for the um, the beach taggers and the lifeguards. So with a lot of the office supplies and things like that, and some of the uniforms are for the that uh, portion. Any questions? Okay, uh, for the monthly report, we had five bathers rescued, one surfer rescued, one EMS call, one police call, and two lost children were found. Uh, for the entire season, there were 29 bathers rescued, five surfers rescued, there were three uh, distressed catamarans that we had to go out and help. There were 21 EMS calls, seven police calls, and 22 lost children were found. Uh, it, it seems in the last year or two that late August and the post Labor Day activity on the beach has dramatically increased. It, I don't know, I thought maybe it's because people still wanna rent here, but it's become so expensive in the, in the middle of the season that they just are coming now. Because you see a lot of families coming down, they have young children, um, but it, it, it seems to be harder for us to retain guards and the beaches are actually becoming more active. It's kind of, a, and, and the town is encouraging people in the shoulder season to come down. You know, the weather's nice, the water's still warm, they're going to go to the beach. So it's, it is challenging uh, every year. Uh, the weather is supposed to be nice this weekend. So uh, I spoke with Jill, we're going to try and have a handful of guards on maybe open 96th Street and maybe one other beach and have a, a few people that can respond to some of the other areas. Um, but that, that would probably be it. This would be the last. We're going as far as we can. We probably won't have anyone available after that at all. And uh, at some point, fall will arrive. 
I wanted to commend the guards on, a, on doing a fine job this summer. There are, it's, in, it's incredibly busy down there. They, they, uh, they're looking at the water, they're dealing with people coming up to the stands, asking questions. It's hot, it's raining, it's sunny, it's windy, it's everything, and I think they did a good job. Um, and I wanna thank all of you for your support. And that's my report. Thank you. Thank you. Your leadership means a lot, Sandy. Thank you. Okay, next up would be recreation. Afternoon. Um, you have the you can still see the little highlighted. Um, so I going looking at the what we spent last year. I kept an ongoing uh, spreadsheet and I tried to highlight the additions to this. Um, so if we're just looking at the first one that jumps out at you is the printer ink. I was very fortunate, I guess, to buy all, we have all different colors because we do all their uh, flyers. So I had to replace every single one of them at once and that Staples receipt came to $505. Um, I thought it probably might be cheaper to buy a whole nother printer at that point. But I think in the past, the number, the 250 number was from maybe just replacing a couple of the cartridges. Um, so that figure just went up um, hopefully we can save it a little bit on the yellow. I know that obviously the black goes out first, but that's just kind of as far as what flyers are printing out. So it's 505 for all of the color uh, cartridges to get replaced. Um, and then if we go down, we can actually remove that Weebly Pro site, but I didn't know if that would have needed to go to tourism. I'm sorry, say that again. The Weebly Pro site under dues and subscriptions. Because we, because now we have uh, Mr. Joyce is work professionally working on our site, correct? So that expense could go that out of our away. site. Yes, mm -hmm. um, we no longer work with Weebly. We have a professional that's doing our website, so that can be removed. Um, what was never added before was the USTA membership. We host two USTA sanctioned event tennis tournaments here, um, so we do have to pay that. It's a small fee of just thirty-five dollars to maintain that membership status with them. Um, and then the addition of the rec website um, wasn't very far off. It went from 300 to 360 for Mr. George to be able to professionally do it. And I don't know if any of me have gone to the rec, the new rec website, but it is leaps and bounds better than it has been in the past as far as just navigation and user friendly uh, wise. Um, and then the addition, there was an addition of cell phones. Um, so in the summer, I oversee a staff of 29 uh, staff members and four volunteers. So I, again, I was lucky to only get a couple call outs, but then I get constant calls that either the bathroom is overflowing, which we've had a lot of issues with, with the new uh, bathroom in the tennis building and stuff like that. So as much as I'm not on call, I kind of am on call <laughs> with that. Um, and then moving down, the only thing that was added into the promotional <coughs> advertising brochures is the tennis and pickleball membership cards. Uh, in the past, they were actually just handwritten on Rolodex cards if they bought, if they purchased a pickleball or tennis membership. So we just buy 100 of each of those. Um, and people, they feel like it's an actual membership card. So we have got a lot of, lot of awesome feedback with that. What did go down was the support building furniture and supplies. That building is already furnished and supplied, the new uh, support tennis building. Um, so that goes down drastically from 3,000 to the 200 and 200s just for office supplies, paperwork, um, paper, printer. We have a computer out there. Uh, and then also if a shelf or anything like that breaks. Um, and I added 96th Street building supplies just to kind of give me a cognizant line item with that down to 96th street we have uh, i'm constantly unfortunately replacing shuffleboard discs um a lot of, i mean we do we, we do have it staffed but we do have a, a staff member that's down there constantly walking around the bocce courts tennis courts um, basketball courts so we can't really keep that close watch of the kids that are playing break the disc because that often they're just mishandling them um, uh, the other thing that doubled was zip ties. Um, 
and the reason for that is if you look around all the tennis courts and uh, basketball courts, they, the, all the windscreens are actually held up by zip ties. And uh, Mr. Gear does an amazing job at, he f perfectly figured out the right signs to it. So he puts the 100 pound zip ties on the bottom and the 50 pound ones on the top. And if a gust of wind comes, it's not ripping the grommets out of the windscreens. So all we're doing is replacing zip ties rather than replacing the full windscreen. So in look, and in turn, you know, we're spending, yes, that's a thousand dollars in zip ties, but we're also not spending thousands of dollars on replacing all the windscreens that we have um, for the reckoning total. Um, if you go down a little bit more, another big drastic change was the pickleballs. This has been ongoing. Uh, pickleballs are about $2 a ball. Um, and with the open play pickleball membership, when they come play, to, you, to date, we've spent uh, about $820 on pickleballs because they're breaking. We did talk in uh, mm -hmm. our last meeting about us being able to hopefully buy them at wholesale and reselling them to people. <coughs> provide them with only whatever you provide but them with, and then if they need more balls at $2 a piece, yeah, I did. they might some. respect them. Right, <laughs> and I, I mean, I've done also some research with the surrounding communities. Uh, Ocean City doesn't have any equipment. They have great pickleball courts, but they don't rent out paddles or balls, and that's the way that they're run. Um, but with the numbers that we show here, we get, we get anywhere from, I mean, I think the largest count was 350 people in the morning playing pickleball. So I, I was advised to just make those corrections and then I'm sure we're trying to iron it out and see what can work with the pickleball people as far as, you know, they do pay $80 for a membership to play in open play in the morning. So we were trying to discuss maybe with that open play membership, you get allotted balls and then Unfortunately, it's just the, I've talked to them, we've, di we've tried different types of balls, everything, and it's just, they're, they're expensive. And we buy, we, we do buy them in bulk too. I buy them by the, the dozen, they're 30, 30, 30.99 for a dozen of them, so. We're trying, <laughs> we're trying. We wanna keep the pickleball people happy. Um, and then if you go to the portable pickleball nets, it was 600, that, I don't see that being that uh, expensive moving forward since we re replaced all six of them. So I cut that in half, uh, just forward thinking that we're probably, hopefully, if we keep, not keep them out, when we see a lot of rain coming in, me and Mr. Gear have been doing a pretty good job of bringing them inside so they're not rusted, which is the biggest, uh, the biggest threat to all, most of our equipment. Um, so I think it's just taking care of it and then in the future we'll replace if the broken ones, but it shouldn't be replacing them if, because the weather, the elements, they're left outside. Um, and then the adult pickleball paddles and youth pickleball paddles, um, we went ahead, we were spending way too much money on these because we were purchasing the wooden ones and they were breaking very, very, they were, there was at least five breaking a day with those. So we went ahead and did a big purchase of that and bought a hundred of the carbon fiber ones and so far I've only returned five and they've replaced them for us. So I don't foresee that expense happening next year, but then maybe the following year after that, we might have to go and replace them. Uh, um, updated playground signs. We bought all new playground signs this year. I, I don't foresee us having to spend $400 on them again, um, but I guess it's, you know, I just cut that in half with just in case if anyone does happen to those signs, we can replace the ones that Could they be in need attention. Capital? Would that mm -hmm. be in capital? Not that. That's too small an amount. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then I added the tidy court trash cans. Uh, these trash cans often get hit with tennis balls, and we've had to replace a lot of them. Um, that's just been brought to my attention. They, they're the caddies that go on every single one of the tennis courts, um, and we've had to replace a handful of them moving forward. Um, computer supplies, repairs, updates, that stays the same, our rec management software. Um, I called them and they said they don't foresee the price going up anytime soon, so that stays the same. Um, professional fees, the only increase would be the highlight of the Family Fun Night Entertainers. That is every Monday where we provide the Family Fun Night Entertainment at the Firehouse. Um, a lot of these entertainers, their prices are going up significantly. Uh, so I just added 
250 to that since we've added the face painters. Pretty much all of our entertainment averages between 350 to $400 per night. And a lot of them keep that base rate, even though it is only 7 to 745. I've tried to say you're only here for 45 minutes. Can you prorate it? But they really didn't bite on that. Um, the additional thing that went up is the uniforms. Uh, with the staff, our numbers are actually growing because our leagues and our clinics are growing. So we're have to hire more support staff. And then with the addition of the new uh, tennis building, that's also another office hour shift that needs to be picked up. So it's just increasing staff. And then the same thing with the leagues and clinics. Um, this year, there was a huge increase in the leagues and clinics. We had, I think, over 70 new kids that came and were participating in the leagues and clinics. I had to go back and reorder more t-shirts for them because uh, every kid that signs up for a league or a clinic receives a free t-shirt. Um, uh, a big help, thank you, Sandy. Uh, if you turn to the CPR training, um, I just, it was at 200, but a CPR cert is $50. So in the event that Sandy actually uh, was able to certify about six of our kids this year, um, it was never happened in the past, but I, anybody that's really working with groups of children, I think that should be CPR and first aid certified. So in the event that Sandy can't help us and we need to get that sooner, I just put that in just in case, but he was able to help us out big time this year. And that really made me feel more comfortable with my staff being uh, CPR and first aid certified. Um, the portable AEDs, again, thank you, Sandy. <laughs> we used his hand-me-downs and all we had to do was replace the batteries and the pads. And they have a two year shelf life. So next year, we're all set for next year. We do not have to repurchase them. And then the year following that, we'll see if we need to re repurchase the pads and the batteries. Um, what else we got? Uh, another increase, if you look at the July 4th uh, sound system rental, um, I was informed that the prices that were given in the past is the reason why the guy is no longer in business. And <laughs> That is now the, the new price. He actually he cut us a big deal this year as kind of understanding the situation where he wanted our business. He was also the same sound guy that we used down for the concert. Um, but he said, you know, moving forward, it is going to be this price. So he was really uh, flexible and willing to work with us. But that's the new price that will be moving forward with that. Um, the pickleball tournament, uh, it went from uh, 1500 to 2000 just for the mere fact of T-shirts. Our participation... Uh, was maxed out this year. So last year we had 119 participants and this year we had 150. Um, and the medals will stay the same because obviously there's always first, th first, second, and third, but the t-shirts per participant goes up. Um, and then I have to also purchase more food and other refreshments for that. So there's just a slight increase, but we actually do end up making a decent profit on that tournament. Um, The next line on the changes is the equipment repair. Um, I added playground swing backups. Uh, there was a swing that broke down at 82nd Street, and it took us about five weeks to get a replacement in. Um, and in the middle of the summer, that's unacceptable to have a, you know, a missing spot. Even if people aren't using it, it's not an aesthetically good look to see one of the swings missing off of the swing sets. Uh, so I just put something in there so we can get kind of an inventory. <coughs> So in case that does happen again, we were able to just replace it immediately. Um, the playground sand, that is just due from where the location where it's at and the wind blows all of the material out of the way. Um, we have tonnage that was dropped off this year. I don't foresee us needing it next year, but in the event that it does blow away or if we get the pour, which is a capital request that I'm doing, we won't need that at all. Um, so hopefully that works out. Um, and then I also added infill mix uh, to upkeep our softball, our ball field, where we do our softball, baseball clinics. Um, we have a league that comes in every Sunday. We also have Philly Sports League come in, and they do a weekend big tournament there. It's a big part of our 4th of July home run derby. Um, not much upkeep has been given to that. Um, I am putting in capital to have that whole thing kind of not resurfaced, but looked at a little bit tighter. So in event that that doesn't get approved for capital, it, the, at the bare minimum, at least some infield mix provided to that would be a huge help to, as far as even safety purposes with that. Um, 
So with all this, not including the next ones, uh, the next one was a capital request last year, uh, and it's the hard true dumpster rental and the hard true yearly conditioning. It's a significant increase. Um, if they're clay courts and where they're at right now, the material is blowing into the sidewalk. I don't know if anybody's ever been there, but we are purchasing for the first year, we got approval from last year's capital to purchase court covers. Um, we're, I'm not so sure of how much that will help with that, but we do have to have, we have a professional come in um, and he lays down all the hard true. He puts all the nails on the striping. It's just, it's a clay court and it takes a lot, a lot of maintenance. We have to water it, you have to roll it, to pack it down to be safe. Um, so that's what we paid last year. And then uh, Mr. Kraft advised me to move it into operating <coughs> because this is something that we're gonna have to pay every year to open up our hard true, our clay tennis courts. Um, but we are, you know, look, looking forward, we did have, we have a, a thinner windscreen on the outside of it. So hopefully a lot of the material will be able to blow through that. And then we are, you know, coming November, we're gonna put covers on the court. So hopefully that'll help. And then that price will go down because then they won't have to drop as much tonnage of material because hopefully it'll still be on the courts. Um, so that's that dramatic increase with that. Um, so, I mean, the total from this year was uh, 56,340. If you minus the hard true, which was in the capital before, I'm actually uh, 1,560 less from last year. Um, so I made some appropriate changes, but I don't, that's kind of a, a cost that we couldn't really get away from as far as with the hard true, with the clay courts and the maintenance that it costs for that. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and then just my report, pretty quick. Uh, pickleball is still showing up in numbers. They're there every morning. Uh, we've been blessed with some really good weather. Um, and then all fall programming is underway and we're held at 82nd Street. So if you know anybody that's wanting, you know, needing something to do, we have a lot of programs that are listed on between Mahjong, we have sit and fit, move and tone, line dancing, everything like that. So uh, trying to really keep the community involved. I know a lot of people came in and we're having, like, like Danny said, we're having a lot more people show up now in September and hopefully we'll continue with the weather. And that's it. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, next up, tourism. Danny? Mm -mm. Right up there. I don't know if I can see that far. Um, so I'm just going to go line by line um, through mine as well. Um, that first one, um, I had a couple of items just also that um, actually moved over to the rec department, so you'll see. Um, I'll mention them as we get to them. Um, for the office supplies, um, basically the copy paper is a shared expense um, that I get charged. Um, printer ink and the other office supplies, I do go through a, for, uh, about $800 worth of printer ink. We have a four color uh, printer that I use. Those cartridges do, um, each time you replace them at $175. Um, for the group of four, so I usually use, uh, I'm on track to use about five to six of them um, before the end of the year. Um, s for dues and subscriptions, there's a slight um, increase here. We added some participation in meetings and events with the County Chamber of Commerce. Um, the first one, um, the Travel Show Partnership I'm looking at, is, um, that is, we do a half partnership with the County Department of Tourism. Um, we act, that expense is actually $5,000. We do split it with the Stone Harbor Chamber of Commerce. So our portion of that is $2,500 a year. Um, what that includes is the County um, Chamber, or the, the County Depart Department of uh, Tourism um, goes to 14 different travel shows um, in the country. And it enables us to send um, uh, promotional material, um, advertising um, to those, to seven of those travel shows. Um, and also the Philadelphia Flower Show is included in that. Um, the New Jersey Travel Industry Association, they're the dues, they're actually um, $250, not the $200 that we budgeted for this year. So that went up a little bit. 
um, Southern Shore, the SS DMO, that's Southern Shore Regional Destination Marketing Association. Um, that's a membership, that's a regional tours association. Um, it promotes Atlantic, Cape May, and Cumberland counties. Um, it's through, it's uh, part of the state. Um, tourism conference and seminars. Um, I can probably, that's just basic education for different tourism, tourism conferences that come up. Um, I did decrease that a little bit because I don't think I need to spend that entire 225 for that. But we did add um, at the bottom the, the uh, Cape May County Chamber of Commerce. And that basically is for me to attend about half of their meetings and events for the year, not every single one. They're, it usually costs about $35 to go to each one of those meetings. Um, for under cell phones and internet, it's basically internet for me, um, no cell phone. Um, the info at Shackfest, that's an actual email account that we have just for the Arts and Crafts Festival. We have a separate website and email for that. That did go up, it's going up. It was only f uh, 416 a month, now it's going up starting in um, December, it's gonna go up to $6 a month, so. Um, and I anticipate that saying the same for the next few years. It hasn't changed in a few years. So I don't, I don't think it's gonna go up. If it does, it's only gonna go up by a dollar or two each month. Um, we do have a domain name, the Shackfest donate domain name. Um, we can save some money um, there by paying for it in a five-year increment. So that's why you have zeros, because this year we paid um, we paid for five years. So we won't have to pay that again until 2024. Um, for the hosting of that website though, that is about $100 um, for the year. Um, the Amazon Business Membership, that's basically a, an Amazon um, account for, anyone can use that in the borough. Um, it's basically a, for ordering um, supplies or whatever we need, so you don't have to pay shipping or anything like that. It's basically Amazon. It's basically Amazon Prime for um, for businesses, and that's just it comes out of my budget there. Um, for equipment and service, that's just a prorated share um, to my department for the copier. Um, promotional advertising. Um, I just um, for print advertising. Um, Increased it a little bit, but you'll see further down, there's some print advertising at the bottom, that roasted beet, we had um, we had budgeted $600. Um, I kind of just incorporated it into one big print advertising, like kind of miscellaneous sources. That way I don't have to, I don't really feel like I, I want to be tied to a specific um, print vehicle except for people that we might have a contract with and I don't have a contract with. We had the press in there before and we didn't do any advertising with them. Um, but I'd like to have, I, I'd like to have just the option to advertise possibly in maybe some more regional magazines rather than the newspaper. Um, but we do have the Herald, we do an ad in the Herald um, typically for our um, um, island holiday uh, event. Um, the, the Cape May County, where am I up to? The vacation guide, that is, and the events calendar there, that's the Cape May County Chamber of Commerce. So we advertise in their publications. The SJ Vacationer, that's the Southern Shore Regional DMO Magazine. So we typically do an ad, a full page ad in that every year. And that is the uh, magazine and advertising that goes to all the travel shows. Um, banner advertising, I reduced that a little bit because I think we can do that for, um, that's basically doing like, the $2,000 would be basically doing four. Um, I think we can do it for, I think we can get away with doing three save a Why lot of money there. Why do we do there. banner advertising? I'm sorry? For the Why do we do banner for advertising? For like the Arts and Crafts Festival, beach opening, we have a banner ad to get people to come to the event. Okay, thank you. It does, it does reach a lot of people. On the, on, you're only gonna do that on like a holiday weekend, but it's for, for those events. Our events that we advertise basically are um, our beach opening, the 4th of July, the Arts and Crafts Festival, and then Island Holiday. Those are the borough events that we advertise that we put, um, okay. put you know, money into okay. specific ads. And it is also, I typically print advertising in this media goes up every year, but 
I can work within a number. Um, there's a way, there are ways, I mean, we don't have contracts with these people, we don't do a lot of it, but if their price goes up, you can reduce the size of the ad a little bit. You don't, you don't have to just keep spending the same amount of money. It's also um, my intention and hope to, you know, get some sponsorship money out there that's out there and maybe reduce our costs a little bit um, by getting some, some sponsors so from some larger companies. The, where am I at? So radio, I took out radio um, going forward. I mean, it's something, if we do want to do it, I could take it out of some of the other print, but um, I find that now we're doing, we have our Facebook and we have more social media outlets so we can save some money on paid advertising by using social media. Um, I did add um, an amount for online digital advertising though in the future because I think you, for, you can do, you can reach a lot of people um, for $2,000 for the entire year. That would only be, we're talking like, you know, two to three hundred dollars a month, you can really uh, reach a lot more people than right. you can in some of your more traditional um, advertising. The Channel 97 support, that's the annual fee for public access TV. The Sunshine Arts, the source book where the shows are, that's advertising for artists and vendors for the Arts and Crafts Festival. Um, did save a little bit of money there, just reduced, um, one, I just reduced it by one ad. Um, seven Mile Publishing, that's advertising for borough events in the summertime. We go from May through December, we advertise in the Seven Mile Times. Um, the Seven Mile Beach Guide is actually an ad that's for the Avalon Chamber of Commerce, that's their guide. Um, SNJ, that's a newscast um, that was done out of uh, Cumberland County for Southern Jersey. That's been discontinued, so I just took it out completely. That's not coming back. The, we have a mobile app. The fee to have that each year did go up a little bit, so that's the new price going forward. Um, software, that's basically subscription and upgrade to the design software we use right now. Um, we use something called Canva and Flip Snack, and it's uh, just like a, a basic graphic design software that you pay a subscription for. Um, I have miscellaneous ads here, and that's basically in case we have to maybe add an event or something that we didn't anticipate. Um, I have um, an item, a line item there. It's definitely, if we don't need it, we don't have to spend it. Um, equipment and purchase repairs is basically repair or replace equipment, for example, uh, chairs, tables, tents, things that break. Um, we have Mr that we could use, that, that broke, that we can use for the Arts and Crafts Festival um, next year. Um, things break at events, so we have to replace them. <laughs> Professional fees. Um, I have a fee for graphic design. Um, that's only if services are needed for something that can't be accomplished in-house. So that's another item that kind of there just in case we need to go out um, outside of the borough to maybe even get a video or some kind of, some kind of graphic design fee. Um, the Family Night Entertainment actually moved to the uh, rec department, so that was in, that's now in Tina's budget. Um, the Shack Fest vendors, um, that I increased. This year, um, the Jitney costs um, went up. He agreed this year to do it for the same cost as he did last year, but he did inform me that next year the, the price um, will go up. It went up. It went up about $800, but he gave it to me for the same price this year. Um, baby parade vendors, actually was able to reduce that a little bit. Um, beach opening entertainment, that's our, um, the entertainment. We have a steel drum player typically that plays at the beach opening. Um, the farmer's market entertainment, we have um, someone that plays the guitar every week at the farmer's market, that's the same price. Um, the 
Tuesday at the Tower AV, that's the uh, sa uh, sound and stage for the Tuesday at the Tower concerts. That's also, um, that's our share, that's half. So that's usually, a, it's over $10,000. Um, we share that with the chamber. And that did go, that went up a little bit this year. Um, Tina kind of alluded to that before. Um, we used to use a company called Buck London. He's the owner of that company, um, sold it to one of his employees. Um, we are using that company, Marnie and I um, did talk to other audiovisual uh, companies, sound companies. He's still cheaper than everybody else, but he is, um, it, the prices for that are going up. Um, the Island Holiday Acts, just based on um, what we did last year, um, prices up about $200. Um, Island Holiday AV, that's the audiovisual. So I did increase that a little bit for the next few years, just um, anticipating the price of that going up as well. Uh, National Night Out, I was actually able to um, reduce that a little bit um, by consolidating the, um, the DJ and um, the face painter to give them a little extra time and then we were able to reduce um, the that $475 uh, charge from the other entertainer. So we just used the, the two, so we did save a little bit there. Um, the, now the special events, these are basically um, for the beach opening. This includes the promotional giveaways, decorations, supplies for the actual event. Um, and just to increase that a little bit this year or for the next few years because we, we gave a little away a little bit more than we usually, but it was, um, it's an event that I think people look forward to and we give away sunglasses and lip balm, things like that at that event. Um, the farmer's market, that includes signage, um, any kind of promotional item. We do um, get bags for the um, farmer's market. We do, I have it in here because we do write a check for it, but we do get that money back from the county um, as part of a grant, but we do actually write a check, so I put it on, so it is a line item. For uh, Shack Fest, though that amount is basically the directory signage, uh, brochures that we have printed, maps, um, just miscellaneous tools, decorations, we get zip ties, signs for the kiosk, signs for the different tents. Um, that's just all the, the, uh, the items we need for that. Um, just based on what we spent this year, I think going forward, $2,500 should, should cover it. Uh, for Island Holiday, it's basically the promotional, any promotional giveaways. We do a uh, Christmas ornament, um, new replacement decorations, trophies, prizes for various events, um, like the, you know, the pep parade and the, the holiday dash. We do supplies for, um, for, for the events, like throughout the entire weekend, at different signs for the kiosks. Um, the tree lighting ceremony, we do have to look at some new and replacement um, decorations there. The, uh, what am I up to? July, uh, July 4th, that's the price for the band. Um, actually was able to do it a little cheaper, so going forward I reduced that a little bit. Um, the July 4th uh, barge, that's for the fireworks. Um, we did pay $19,000 this year, so going forward I'm just gonna work with that $19,000 till I hear otherwise. Um, the July 4th stage and sound, that is, now we're using that same audiovisual company, so that has gone up uh, starting next year, that's gonna go up a little bit more as well. Like he was work, he did work with us this year, but um, going forward, we're gonna be paying a little more for that. I mean, I'll keep, we'll keep looking at some maybe other alternatives, but um, he, is, he is the um, most inexpensive that I've found to date. Uh, the pickleball tournament and the mayor's wellness um, campaign, they have moved to the rec department's budget, so we could take that out of there as well. Um, 
And that miscellaneous, that's basically for possible add-on events, maybe events that we didn't, that we wanna add, um, or events that we just didn't um, anticipate. Like this year we had the police department dedication that wasn't you know, in our budget to begin with, so it's just a, it's just a kind of a good little um, place to keep, a placeholder for, for events that um, we didn't budget for or that we wanna try doing, maybe something with the festival lights next year. Um, or an, an additional musical event. Um, equipment rental, slight um, increase here. Um, Caprioni, that's the portable toilets for the 4th of July and the Arts and Crafts Festival. Um, the Shack Fest rentals, that's the Arts and Crafts Festival tents. Uh, Island Holiday, that's the rental that covers the carousel and snow machine and costumes. Um, Tuesday at the Tower and a, um, additional events. That's just, it would be rentals for any kind of additional event that we have that we need. And then we have the special, these are the flags. Um, these are the seasonal banners and flags in town if anything has to be replaced or we don't want anything new. Um, when, so our, for 2019, the budget was, well, the finals, 134.98. If I remove those recreation, those three items that moved to the rec department, the finals, 126.582. So my savings, so I have a savings of about $1,100 um, going forward. I don't know if anyone had any questions. Um, as far as my report for Tourism this weekend is Saver September. Um, so Friday night they're having the dinner. Everything's on track with that. And it's also the Garden Club Flower Show at the elementary school. Um, and we're pretty much on track with everything there. Um, what I'm working on right now is our big um, Thanksgiving weekend island holiday event. Um, the theme this year is, is the same as last year. We're going, still going with the White Christmas. Um, I have started working on securing the vendors for Friday and Saturday and the signage um, right now. So um, we have that to look forward to. So the parade will be Thanksgiving uh, Saturday at 6.30. So. My only question is probably something that's been discussed already, and I wonder. Um, it's about your Amazon, Amazon Prime membership. Um, is that just for tourism? Yeah, anybody available can use it. to anybody, anybody can use in it. the borough? Yeah. Okay, Anyone that's can use important. It. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as long as they they just the. I, I think I, I mean I think anyone that has a, even if you have one at home, you can get into ours. So you could just if they come get. I know recreation uses it. I've personally never even used it, um, but it is there. So anyone can use. Well, it. as long as all the other <laughs> departments are aware that it is yeah. available to them, because it completely yeah. eliminates yeah. shipping. Yeah. Yes. Good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Great. Okay, we've got 4.32, so if we'll just take a couple more minutes, we can finish up. We only have two, should be quick items to discuss, then we can take a couple minute break and then do the council meeting. The first is the request for the bonfire for October 5th, 2019. Um, great event last year. I don't see no reason people loved it. Great turnout, great evening. My it requires permission for the mayor to sign a permit to allow the bonfire by ordinance. So you just want a motion? So no, just making sure we can do it in the, in the regular meeting. 
but just if anybody's got any questions, wants to hear anything more about it, now would be the time where you could ask. My only question is, and I've asked it before, and I just will ask it again for all the right reasons, is it legal in New Jersey to have a bonfire on the beach? Yes, it should be as long as you have it under controlled circumstances and the fire department approves of it. And we have in the past, we do consult the GIF, the Joint Insurance Fund on this, um, and it is something, if it, the GIF is comfortable with it. I would think that if it was illegal, the GIF would have told us that we're kind of getting into some murky area, and they have not. This will be the third year that we did it, and it is something that people enjoy. It'll be on the 95th Street Beach on October 5th, 2019. One thing we did see last year is we can drop the hours down to more like five to nine. It was five to 10, but we saw that most people really were done by nine, so we'll go five to nine. And we'll, we'll get a motion at the regular meeting. And an update on the point opening? It's the open. point is open. Good so it's open. open, whatever the ordinance is, just comply as far as going down there with your vehicles. And nothing else on the work session? We need a motion to adjourn. So, so moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned. We'll be back in about three minutes and we'll